Welcome back again guys. The last time was a bad ending and it is also a bad ending. But let's continue. Maybe we can have a good ending here. Let's continue from... Uh, take the case, reject the case. No, not this. By the way, this is not really good. Um, what about this? You will lose and save progress. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I am sure to do. I want to do this. What's gonna happen if we went to the painting? Last time we didn't went to the painting. Oh, beautiful mermaid. There is mount the mountain by the fireplace. The painting of a beautiful woman floating on water. Hmm. Her pale skin is in contents. Crafty, Brandy. again the contrast of the dark, murky water that keep her hiding. Okay. Keep her bound to the canvas. He stares intensely in the picture, an empathic sorrow swallow within him swells within him disarming his very senses and forcing him to inch closer surrounding himself to the sweet song poor thing how lonely you must feel okay the mammoth is the bad one you are a lot like him a ah, like henry uh oh uh oh, this is bad. This is bad. A Hugo approaches closer and closer to the painting and his mind screaming to run. He sees that. Okay, this is bad. What did you do into the painting? He can finally see beyond the face the lady portrait. For what the painting truly is. But don't worry. I can take away that sadness. What do you mean? Ah, oh, frick. A deformed creature, a mermaid, floats above the surface. The voice whispers. Oh, okay, this is bad. Large, hollow eyes stares back, boring deeply into his eyes. Her skin is melting, bleeding heavily. This black itcher as it gushes out from the canvas some of it starts to hit not only the floor but at Hugo's as well okay this is bad this is bad the black vicious tar cling persistently into him unrelentless as they continue to pile up and then he feels it that draw him intentionally to this thing but draw him shall do this deep sense of longing rushes through him, snuffing out what a little control he had left. Okay. Finally embracing this nature to come home. Take my hand. Without hesitation, Hugo reaches out his hand while his body leans in closer to the mermaid. She grabs and pulls him in. What? Not once looking back, he dives and follows after her, returning to nothing. What the frick? Bad ending. Beyond the pain. Okay, we got another bad ending. Good start. This is a good start for the third episode of our video. I mean, for the third part of our video. Play throw. Still water. Okay, don't go to the painting. Yeah, we, we should not go to, for the painting. No, no. Stay focused, Yugo. I won't let it get to me. <sighs> yeah, let's not get it to you. Because last time we died because... We died because of the painting. The mermaid is the bad person here. I guess. Or creature. Is that what you say? I don't know. Yeah, but the mermaid, she's a bad person. We cannot let her get closer to us. Oh, 
do just whatever we do, we should not follow that bad voice. Preparing himself, he heads toward the chest and opens it. Inside scrambled together are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper article. Okay, young man found it by the light. Oh, okay. And an unidentified young man was found on the morning of XXXXXXX. Three days prior to his death, according to the police, ruled as a suicide police have claimed that the trouble yield drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed. XXXX. XXXX. No claim of his body has been made yet. Was that Lois? Lois. By the corner of Yugo's eye, he stops, he spots a bright plane buried beneath the bottom. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines and vanished through, retaining a timeless luster. Inside its safeguards, a picture of a young man who gla with glasses smiling brightly. <laughs> okay, that's his friend, I guess. Oh, that's Lois. This must be the locket that he was talking about. What should he do? It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture? Did he put this here? No, it might be, have been Henry. But why would he store it away like this? What should I do? What if we take the locket? I should probably hold onto this for now. Take it to him, please. Lois. A gentle but a distant plea itches in Hugo's heart. A forgotten itch ash of yearning and regret grips him deeply. Feeling not of his own start to rest like a small ripple on a pond. Wanting to be found again and remember it. Don't worry, I'll bring it to him. I'll make sure of it. Hugo is about to put everything back onto the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation coming up. Uh oh, water? Okay, a pool of water randomly spread already seeping onto the chest. Damn it, no. Suddenly the light shut off. Okay, this is the creature again. A scream is heard followed by a merry shout. Yogo is about to call out to Noah, but at the side of Paul's feet before him. <laughs> okay, it's, it's that thing again, looming over him. It stands a tall and ominous view. His face is shrouded in contour, in complete darkness, devoid, devoid him. It appears as a young man, but Yogo knows that it is far from this. No, this is a very thing, this very thing is trying to empty it. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with the fear, he falls toward the horror as if it slowly creeps toward him. It's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within, but this time is drawing nearer, inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Goldie or Noah fell to reach out. Lodges in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallows, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops, looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malic and contemplate it speak. Okay, okay, don't get in my way. Okay, that thing was creepy. All of a sudden, the door of to the bedroom slums shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he desperate gasps desperately for air. His vision blurs and his breathing is 
haggard. He staggers toward the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's slightly jammed, tightly jammed. Okay, no one. Call me. To his dismay, he only greeted the sounds and the other thing of the door. Damn it! From the distance, he finally hears the sound of Golby relentless walking as he get further away from the house. Okay, they are falling something. Diogo rushes toward the window. He tries to break it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from doing, doing so, like being underwater. His movement slow and drowned out as if being dragged down by that thing. Fuck this! Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, he'll grab, grab the chair and start to strike. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off small pieces. The hell of this! Trying, still trying to catch his breathing, muscle all the strength he is left for a final blow. Oh, okay, damn it! You just spread all you. Clearing out the remaining glass shot, he pulls his head out to see if raining. Okay, however, he discovered instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy, despite. How heavy the rain has drastically become, he rushes out for it, grabbing a handful of vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he hasn't lost his foot. He hasn't lost his foot. Yet, to his luck, patches of vein high clutches start to tear away from the wall. Out of this pressure, he struggles to find his grip. None of that but falls when he has left which <laughs> You bad luck shit. Clamoring wildly as he loses his grip on the ivy, he crash down onto a thicket bushes. Crashes lands down into a thicket okay. Air falls out of him. He hails and controls it, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious and immense pain, not only his back but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. This is bad. Although his body screams out in pain, he falls himself up. There is still time. I can do this. I have to do this. To his staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way back by all stopped. Oh, okay. To the lake where this tragedy starts and ends. Lake. Finally, entering through the dark part, Hugo calls out, Kali, no more, where are you? He hears faintly. The sound of barking and echoing of people. He rushes toward the echoes, guiding him through the one down to it. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Oh, okay. Growing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop, Grandpa. Let me go, Grandpa. He's... No, Nina, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. <laughs> okay. Her grandfather, I don't care. Her grandfather is about... Okay, someone need to do something. Don't want to lose anyone anymore. It is at that instant Hugo crouches against the water, pursuing in Nina instead. Hugo, no, don't. 
please fall dead to his ears. Okay. Hugo does not listen to you guys. Not even the way and what his cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he forges ahead. Trying the deep end of the lake, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abbeys. He looks even more frail and disheveled than before. It is as if all the life he lived up until this point has begun to fray, draining every ounce of himself and surrounding it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Morton, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back. Motionless and unre unresponsive, he stares deeply into water. The haze over his eyes is still obscure and persistent. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives, and you are one of them. Yes, Mr. Mortimer. To Nina, you are all she has left. You should not die, Mr. Mortimer. Mortimer. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it, a silent jolt from Henry on, as if tired with emotion. He slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo Holt. He goes hold on him. No, all of this is my fault. Only I got to lose sooner than none of this would have happened. He was waiting for me. He was patient and very patient with me. And yet for all the things he done, I choose my family over him. He is gone before because I didn't pick him. Oh, come on, Henry. That's not your fault. Henry backs further away from him. The shoreline. Uh oh. Mr. Mortimer. His manic eyes never straying away from Hugo as he keeps Louis. I'm sorry. I was the one who dragged you onto this. You deserve so much more. And I wished Henry struggled over his lord. He clasped tightly to his shirt. His throat dry and told from all that good, from all those repressed and silent years of just waiting, waiting for this cause to finally stop. I wish I had gone with you that night, Louis. Sir, even if you still covet that wish, it wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Louis. I, I read that he wrote to you those years ago. Oh, okay. He understood if you didn't want to come see him, but things is Mr. Mortimer Lewis never end. He said so in his letters to you. His letters. For the longest time, I wanted to believe he hated me for that, resented me for the choice, that choice. Or at least I thought it was easier for me to think that way. How long has it been since I talked about him? It's been too long, sir. But that's why you don't have a shoulder all of that pain by yourself anymore. Hmm. We can talk about it. About you and Louis. All of it together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him. But a promise, a promise that Henry had hidden for the longest, a way to forgive himself. He hesitated at first. What fool believed in a deserved forgiveness? Such a thing does not exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out his hand to a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out, we you go a hand cell hood round Henry instead. Slithers round Henry's tent instead. Uh oh, it is awkward. 
its arm and naturally con- control around him, while its head perches on his shoulder. Look at that thing, guys! It's creepy. <laughs> apa itu, guys? Lo lihat, kau lihat kan itu apa? Guys, this thing, this Lo is no longer pretending to be a human. With piercing cold green eye, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but a despair. We can be saved. We can be forgiven. He go. Uh oh. There is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of ending. What do you mean? Before he could reach out for Henry, and he disappears onto the water. Mr. Mortimer. Without hearing the anguish cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him into the abyss. Uh oh. Let's hope for this they can be saved together. I mean, both of them can be saved. Plunging into icy water, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body. Like spikes. Continuously piercing from his legs to the tip of his finger, fiercely, fiercely and unyielding, he his chest tightens and his heart races as he begins, hoping whichever way he goes, he will find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. Okay, swim, you go. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck, finally squeezing all the air out from him. He eats that thing. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away. But with each struggle, his movement begins to weigh heavier and heavier. Uh oh. Lois, where are you, Lois? Huh? It's looking for. It's looking for Louis. <gasps> Digging deep into his coat pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten. Ah, oh, holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. Ah, oh, there you are. Ah, oh, okay. It releases its grip on Hugo. And instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kick with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart and body screaming in pain, he swims desperately to the shore. Oh, that! I just have to. As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last. With his limbs worn out to his energy spent is all he can do. Before he loses his business, he notices a figure swimming toward them, getting closer and closer, and then everything fades to black. Uh oh. Let's hope it's Noah. Drifting along with what feels like endless sea, Hugo causes throw waves after wave. Hmm. Not knowing where he is going or caring for that matter, all he knows is that he is very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night rest? Ah, <sighs> it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. But I'm sorry for talking. Just wanted to see you one last time before I go, Louis. You've done so much for me and Henry. I can't thank you enough. Oh, okay. No worries. I got. I want to thank you too for watching over me, and also, I want to apologize for for my remarks from before. 
Ah, oh, okay. I really thought that I had things to go out once I found you, but you know how that turned out for me. Hehehe. <laughs> it's a lady, really. It's all right, really. After all this time, I didn't think anyone could hear me, especially Henry. Ah, oh, come, Louis. I was worried about him for a long time. He always wanted to keep my me away from his past and struggles to keep me safe from them. But I was too stubborn for my own good. Honestly, I don't regret it. Any of it, even if I could no longer reach out to Henry. Fate waved its threat back to you. Our tangy connection connecting us once more to this very moment hmm. and for that I am forever grateful to you Yuba you are welcome Louis from a far off distant Hugo hears a voice crying out for him beckoning him for him to return well they are waiting for you I guess they really are huh? take care all of you go Okay, you too, Louis. Farewell, Louis. Okay, okay, that's it for us. We did talk with Louis. With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Remaining as he tries to wake up, up his partner, Hugo, he also hears another familiar voice too, annoyingly close to comfort for comfort. <laughs> Okay, eyes shut right open, he jugs up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he casts the remaining water of his leg. Are you alright? Noah sought to pat his back while Colby continued to weigh over Hugo. Where is Mr. Mortimer? He is safe, so is Mina. They both Okay, the police and the ambulance will be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me instead of thank goodness? Thank goodness. I swear you don't listen to a damn word I say. <laughs> you go. You got scolded. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back exactly on someone. Detective Lawrence. Oh, Naya, there is someone I want you to meet. Behind her, an older man, stand an older man. Fell and stutter, he turned to and looks to the side pensively as he pondered himself. Although his yaws have yaws, has long fade, his eyes are what? They are no longer piercing and vicious green. Only eyes just like nine nine ones. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Louis left on this wall? What if he stays a little longer with me? Stays a little longer. It is because of that constant mind I drag everyone down. Oh, come on. And I kept hurting not only him, I was the only one who kept hurting her the most. But you, someone that I've never met, still went out of your way to save me, not knowing my boldness or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It is my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hands. I hope that someday you two will overcome. <laughs> okay. The next day. Well, good morning, Hugo. You are bright and early. Morning. I guess we got the good ending, guys. With much forever and hassle, Yogo cruise 
resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, inspection, he looks like he's going to combos in a minute. Fast. Are you writing up the report without looking up Hugo respond back? Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet and I don't like eating by myself. <laughs> okay. Let me guess. Two is better than one. Bingo. Well, Hugo, you're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Shut it, will ya? I swear, if only I hadn't fallen off from the goddamn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the back back on, he pauses at the mention of Hugo report. Oh yeah, by the way, mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer window? Um, <laughs> I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is why it's broken. Is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Uh, besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bell. And surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. Uh -huh, lucky us, right? <laughs> so what? You just called it a day after all that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it. You pay for it. Would you tell? Of course, I'll pay for it. Hmm. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Say that we already went through a lot for them. So this was nothing in comparison. Comparison. <sighs> You know what? He's right. After all that we went through, we deserve at least a nap. But before he could walk away, he stops and sees a familiar person walking towards the store front, carrying something in there. Good morning, you two. Just barely a foot through the door, a certain bloodhound stirred up from his resting spot and make his way toward Mina, tail uncontrollably wagging. Ah, good morning, you too, Bobby. Nina scratches behind one of the of Goldie ears, making his right foot unconsciously move on its own, scratching an invisible but describable spot for him, desirable spot. Good morning, morning. What bring you here? Morning. Is everything alright with you, Father? Yes, he's doing pretty well, actually, even better than before. We talked so much last night, I hardly slept at all. But honestly, it's been a while since I last spoke to him so freely like that. I hardly felt tired at all. That's wonderful. Ah, but there is something else I wanted to ask about. To put it bluntly, I need your help. If you two aren't busy, I would like some company eating this. Inside a clear plastic bag a stack of two boxes placed on top of each other. She opens the box on top and reveals a colorful array of neatly decorated donuts all lined up. No cramp or squished space. A work of art in Yoko's life. Oh, so pretty. Donuts. They look so, so delicious. We were more we are more happy. Yeah, he as here he goes again with his donuts. But yes, please join us, Mr. Nina. We were about to have our breakfast too. Weren't we, Koya? <coughs> All this so brazen in front of others. You do make it exceptionally easy for me. <laughs> yeah, with your grumpy behavior. You both have such great chemistry together. On the second thought, I'm way too tired so i'm going to have to apologize in advance for this man but truthfully i've been running one last night coffee and i am about to pass out 
Ah, oh, no, it is honestly. I think after break time sounds like what we all need right now. Thanks. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Would you like to join us, Miss Nina? I would love to. I guess we save these, these for later. Yes, yes, please. Noah say happily before setting down the food on his desk. And he then gestured Nina toward the sofa in which she happily take his offer and join them. Oh, look at them, guys. They are happy ever together. Ah, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. Shut it. <laughs> this, this is really nice. Ah, oh, good boy, Goldie. Come here. Nina Godly pushed at him and began to scratch at the back of Goldie. He is once more. Kibu leans a little closer to Noah, his voice above whisper. It was enough for Noah to only hear him. You know I'm glad that you came along yesterday. Ah, what this? Are you getting chummy with me now? <laughs> Call it chummy or whatever, but really mean it. If you hadn't saved us back there, like I told you before, I'd be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Yeah. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest, you deserve it. Eat you. A calming silence fills the room as they, as they bask under. No big parties or celebration, but each other company and sharing this small talk, a small and warm comfort. Good ending. Close. JK's close. Well, that's it. I guess that's it, guys. Huh? What? Hugo Potman. Okay. It's a lady nightfall. When Hugo and Galby arrive at home. Hugo a lady too tuck tuckered out from the remaining assorted mess he left behind for himself lazily. Sheds off his coat and shoes while Goldie heads straight toward his bed. Making his way through unloaded boxes and cramped spaces one by one, Hugo strips down his outside clothes and switches to a regal shirt and sweet pants he found lying around. He plops down onto the clutch. clutch with his head light back and eyes closed as he let out a heavy say, releasing all the tension left in his body. Another day done and gone. Right, Kali? Him, beside him, he hears plainly the rhythmic, delayed breathes of his large companion, who is already falling deeper into sleep. <laughs> I wish I could sleep quickly. Like you, buddy. He gently passed Colby heads. Good night, Colby. Thanks to you. Hugo does one final stretch. Before he re reposition himself to lie oh, to lie down on the couch, tugging at the blanket by his feet and wavering it around him. His body began to relax as he breathing falls into a similar guidelines, finally allowing the walls gather and hug him closely as he began to slowly drift further and further off the slumber. He feels something, a slight chill, gasping just above the base of his neck, never touching but distinctly present all the same. What the frick? Okay guys, do you guys want me to continue? Please hit the subscribe button, like, share the video, comment also on what game you guys want me to play. I hope I can see you in my next video. Bye bye. 12 seconds later. A slight chill, raised just above the base 
so his neck never touching but his tender presence although his sense of two door sense of two door and lab to properly focus on this sensation he does however how to also of the blanket <gasps> that's weird suddenly he hears the front door to his flat shop so sharp so harsh it is as if someone or something had rushed in with enough force that he felt the room had shaken a little okay wasn't this supposed to be a good ending now Hugo is wide awake right he tries to get up and face just uh, this intruder head on but stop realizing he can't move at all oh come on the warmth and comfort from the blanket he felt moments ago ceases to be his own body locked in deep slumber leaving behind his every consciousness to be fully awake to be deathly afraid of this overwhelming presence i know this way really. I always get it. Sometimes, not always. I mean, I sometimes, from time to time, I get this feeling. But like, I try to wake up, but I can't. It's got like, a, someone holding me like a snake, and I can't. I won't be able to move. <laughs> okay, that's that the thing, guys. That the thing. I know the feeling. That's why I am. Right. He struggled to move the muscle in his face, trying desperate to call out for his partner to get his attention. He could go, go. But despite his efforts in uttering his dear companion's name, he is met with no response. In fact, he can't hear or feel God be anywhere near him. Just the rage, raging and erotic tempo of his heart drumming in his ears as he lies there defenseless vulnerable all at the mercy of this thing okay this is not good and then he hears it oh come on the sound of the feet dragging across the wooden floor boats boards Oh, I'm getting closer. Dragging closer. Oh, frick. And closer. Frick tells them. No, not again. Oh, frick. He wants to run. Run far, far away from here. Run still. He tell he feels the fairy tempest. Within him, born his length, leaving him scorch and chalk on ash anywhere but here. He shuts his eyes tightly and begins to steady his uneven breathing, hoping that whatever this nightmare is, he can awake from it. Ah, oh, frick it, he has to. However, everything comes to a halt when he suddenly feels that some chill once more but this time lingering all over his back persistently hovering over him he knows it here he knows it's here frick, frick, i know this feeling standing near him it's unbearable he breathes hatches as he feels this intense freckling feeling a hand hovering so closely above his head could he could feel it damn it he wants to cower to hide forever away but he can't this frightening thing that has been following him stalking him haunting him for years will not rest until he gives in ah oh, the frick his own cause Cutting his own course, all of a sudden his phone rings. Like a spell left it off from him, he can move again. Hugo's eyes dart straight in the direction where the presence should be, hoping to, to chance a peek. 
just a glance at the thing that haunts him. Ah, uh, but there stood no one. Only the moon shines reflected on the window shades, piercing through the shadow. Then what was it? His eyes shot once again at where Golby should be, and he found the bloodhound to be there, alert by the sudden reaching of his phone, and also at Hugo, who looked more disheveled and winded up. He takes a deep breath, steadying his heart as he takes the phone in his hand and answers. Hugo, I'm so sorry to call you so late at night. I forgot to ask you about the festival that's coming up in a few weeks. I was wondering if you would like to come with me. Mm, nice. I know you said you don't really care for outdoor stuff, but I promise you it's going to be fun. Hmm, okay. Hugo, are you there? Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I'm here. I just... Uh, I guess that's not right. I know, no. I mean, no, you're... No, I mean, um... Not your... No, uh, I'm sorry. I am a mess. A mess. Yeah, you are a bit of a mess. What I meant to say was, yes, I would like to go with you to the festival. Wow, I'm a bit surprised, but happy nonetheless. Well, I don't want to keep you from hard in this, so I'm going to end the call. Right, Noah. Hugo, are you alright? Hi, uh, can, can you stay a little longer in the line with me? Well, we can talk about anything. I just um, need company right now. Of course, Hugo. I can stay on the line with you. Thank you, Noah. You know what I was thinking about? A dangerous pastime for sure. I was thinking maybe you should just move in together. And now you are back to your bras and so wonderful what doesn't it sound like a perfect plan i can cook colby loves me and i am good looking <laughs> see a perfect package all in one aha uh -huh, you really don't know when to quit huh yeah he doesn't know nope not at all i can be a quite stubborn remember without a doubt the most stubborn man ever there was a momentary, momentary silence between them before the pair fall into a fit of laughter, filling the room with this warm and bright feeling and bright feel. Hugo melts back into the warmth of his blanket, letting the heat pool once more around him, surrounding him, protecting him, to remember him that he is here with people who love and accept him all the time. A reminder, a comfort in the darkness night. Hmm. Then what was that the end in the dead of night? Hmm. Did you got all the ending for this game to be continued? Thank you for playing and thank you guys for watching. And till the end of the video. Okay, till the next video. See ya. Bye bye. Okay, you guys can see her. There is artwork of some of these. Well, you guys go ahead and just oh, look at the art, man. Guys, can't sympathize for. Thank you for support. Wait a minute. Okay, those 
Happy Halloween. Thank you. Okay, those are arts by the artist. Work on, work on art. Happy New Year. This is where they were together. Hmm, okay. Studio Clump. Concept. Concept by Ota. Concept by Andre. Background. Oh, there is a lot, man, guys. Promotional artwork. Okay. By Z04. And this. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I can't not fuck him. <laughs> okay. Concept by Sasa. This is concept by Ota. Oh, there is different concept. Okay. You guys can learn, I mean, you guys can learn from this concept by knowing how people draw. I mean, studying the art how from the scratch to the final but this is at the beginning stage ah, this is where it should be at the last stage from the start from the lines and then shape line shape and then the color and then the end is color oh that's Henry that's when they visit the, the family house don't tell me this is no okay Colby hey Colby <laughs> this is when he was sleeping that's weird <sighs> they are good friends ah uh, this is the sprite sheet guys oh you guys can see the sprite sheet annoyed eyebrow rise Service smile okay happy frustrated serious stunned there is yeah there is gold be happy also then you this is the consumer of him playful service smile cheerful wink um there's not much for nine now but yeah, the stress, the stressed, crying, the life. Okay, surprise, sleep. And just this is the sprite sheet for Bobby. This is how they draw it. And then they're gonna be the final part, which is the color, the end. Mm -hmm. And there's the background also, guys. These are the backgrounds. Wow, different. Same art, but had different effects. Oh, and this is the cutscene. Wow. Oh, okay. <gasps> this is oh, okay. Okay, that's bad. And that the um. Uh oh. Okay, okay. Dave note, Andre. Okay, th these are the Dave notes. Well, I hope you guys make another. Um, thank you for playing again. Yeah, but thank you guys for making the game. I hope you guys make another, another episode of the game or another part of the game, the second season of the game. That's what I mean. Because in the end, it said continue. We got all the endings also guys. Thank you for playing get all the endings. Now yeah, we got Golby picture. Hee <laughs> hee. Hmm. Oh god. For today guys. And uh, thank you for watching. 
for watching and I hope I can see you in my next video. Bye bye. Bye bye.